What's going on? It's your boy Sermon, the SermonsDomain.com. Today we're here to review Future's long-awaited third album, Dirty Sprite 2. It came with just a week's notice. Um, you know, Future's been on one hell of a run. Everybody's been, you know, excited for it, you know, after Monster and Beast Mode and 56 Nights. And, and really, everything took off after he dropped 56 Nights and everybody started really hopping on the bandwagon, you know, in a good way. And, you know, the Future Hive was born and, you know, all this endless buzz. And as of right now, he's projected to do about uh, 125 to 135K first week, which is really good compared to, you know, his last album when we did uh, 53 first week that was honest. So getting into Dirty Sprite 2, the, the biggest thing here, first off at least, is the production. I love the production. I love the fact that Metro Boomin is executive producer that he's handled um most of the you know production he's on all the all the tracks you know sometimes uh solo producer sometimes co-producer um i'm gonna throw out an unpopular opinion right here i feel like zaytoven is really overrated i don't see the appeal in zaytoven i, I really never have you know i'm listening to like him recycle some of the same beats over the years and it's like you know, I get that you have to have a signature sound, but Zaytoven got a sound and then kind of got lazy with it. And that's not to say that, like, I don't like Zaytoven beats or what, you know, happens over them. Because Future is somebody, you know, you got a real sister, you got, um, you know, what was the other one that Zaytoven produced? Colossal. These are not bad records, you know, because what Future did with them was really good. Um... To me, a Zaytoven production, it all matters about what the artist does on it. And if the artist does good, then it sounds good, you know. Uh, Young Dolph's Preach, it's the exact same beat as Shawty Lowe's On Demand. But I like what Dolph did with it, so, you know, it worked. Back to Dirty Sprite 2, though. I like that feature carried the album himself. He had one guest feature that was Drake, and Drake's bit probably his best guest feature I've heard in a while. And, you know, it just, it just goes to show you, you know, that chemistry that... Future and Drake have continues to shine, shine well. But I like that he carried the album because a lot of people, you know, would enlist features and Future being one of the hottest in the game, you can get, you know, Meek Mill and Rick Ross and Yo Gotti and Young Thug and, you know, the list of names goes on. He didn't want to do all that. He just wanted to work with the, the people he's closest with and that's, you know, his producers. Um, one of the standouts for me was Know the Meaning. I like the message that he's doing he's he's honest you know and then the album is pretty much full of like you know club ratchet stuff and that's what people love from future but when you throw on a record like know the meaning it stands out differently you know it just it stands out because you know he's being honest about you know what happened with him and dj asco you know how he felt you know losing his hard drive stuff like that just you know it just stands out for people and but back to like, you know, the Ratchet stuff, man, two of my favorites currently, I will probably have a new favorite, um, you know, next week or something, but two of my favorites right now is Groupies and Freak Ho. I love, you know, both of those records because they're very catchy, and one of the things that the album does well is a lot of catchy material, and I'm not talking about like radio catchy, I'm just talking about future catchy, future's always had that that knack for doing catchy records and you know who knows there could be a single among all of this that comes out you know something besides commas commas you know was you know kind of hot and i'm talking about like out of the new batch out of the new songs but it just depends but you can really spin like you can do like a spin a wheel and then throw a dart and you can pick any other records can turn into some kind of hit, whether it's like a strip club hit, like a regional hit, or like, you know, radio hit, whatever, you know, there's there's different uh, ranges on here. And so I'll say this, Dirty Sprite 2 definitely lived up to the hype, and it's an album that I'll probably keep in rotation for a while. If I had to rate it, I'd probably give it a, like a four out of five. You know, I like that Future stuck to what he wanted to do. He wasn't trying, you know, to, to be in that pop lane. 
he said on, I think he said on, he said on, um, I served the base, he said, uh, tried to make me a pop star, but they made a monster. I like that, because that's pretty much it sums up who Future is, what Future is. You know, he tried to go for that, you know, records like I Won with Kanye, stuff like that. You know, it, it works to an extent, but it's not what people want out of Future. And so when he went on his mixtape run, it got everybody excited. And then Dirty Sprite 2 was definitely going to keep them excited. You know, he went for the 4P and he definitely, he definitely does it. So I'd give it a 4 out of 5. And, you know, the album's been out for, you know, a couple days now, and I would love to hear your thoughts, your comments, what are your favorite records, what are your least favorite records. Uh, let me know in the comment section, then subscribe to the channel if you're not already, like the video, um, share the video, follow me on Twitter, at Sermons Domain, and most importantly, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, peace.